workings. This is an example to look at the displacements or the strains that take place in axial structures due to gravity, both from hanging under their own weight as well as from things hanging from them. So we're going to assume that there's a decorative feature supporting a very small light suspended from a ceiling that consists of a small LED light weighing 20 grams attached to the bottom of a solid circular rod that consists of two cross sections. The lower cross section is 25 millimeters in diameter and 50 centimeters long, and the upper section consists of a cross section that is 12 millimeters in diameter and 120 centimeters long. The architect is asked how much lower the light will hang due to gravity effects and would like you to perform a calculation. State all the assumptions and explain the steps or nature of your calculation. So pause this and draw the sketch and think about the assumptions. Okay, so I'm assuming that you have a sketch and I'm assuming you've thought about the fact that we're going to assume that the parts actually are elastic in nature. We're going to assume that we're on Earth. We're going to assume that there are no other loads or moments that we have to concern ourselves with. And here is my sketch for what we would see. Okay, so we have in my sketch, hopefully, we have something that's analogous, a ceiling. Then we have an upper column that's shown here, a lower column section, and we have the LED light. Okay, if we were just to start with the ceiling and we were to hang the light, all right, the light would actually be able to displace under its own weight. That's the deformation of the column under its own weight. We're going to call that type displacement type 1. We also have the deformation of the column under the applied load. And this section, once we hang this piece off of it, or if this piece is hanging off of it, it's also going to lengthen, right? This piece, the upper piece, is going to lengthen due to this weight hanging off, off the bottom of it. Okay? We're going to apply that same idea as we go forward, and we can think about how that will affect the rest of the problem. So we can say that the total displacement of the light compared to what the initial part length would be, it is some of the displacements due to the weight of the light that is applied both to the lower column and to the upper column, the self-weight of the lower part, the displacement of the upper column due to the mass of the lower column, the mass of the LED, and its own self-weight. Okay? So those are the, the parts or the, the things that we have to consider looking in this problem. So I've drawn a free body diagram just of the upper piece, just to, to give that description, and provided a, a description here. So the mg of the column increases with length, right? And in fact, if we look at this, this is the, the large section of the rod and the LED hanging off the bottom. This is the mg of this section, and this is the force that keeps it uh, held to the ceiling. If we were to actually draw the free body diagram here at this position, Right? Just to consider the free body diagram for this section, we could pull it out. Right? This vector should be the same length, something like that. But the vector hanging off the bottom of this section right, should actually be longer right, than this one was because all of this mass would be hanging off the part if we only considered that section. All of this mass plus this force would be applied to that section, plus whatever the little mg is of that piece, okay, in order to provide a free body diagram just to that section. And we could do that. We could decide arbitrarily to pick any place we want to, okay? So we get displacement of type 1 from its own weight because we can continue look at different length sections of this or integrate along its length. And then we also have the extension that takes place from the part that's hanging off the bottom. Okay, we can look at the bottom piece here. And that's what's shown in the next diagram. The bottom piece has really the same idea. It actually has the possibility to extend under its own mass. It has the LED light hanging off the bottom and has a force holding it back so it's attached to the upper column. Okay, so I've also put in the, in the next frame an example of the different components we have to consider with the dimensions and some, some information that uh, I used for this. I chose steel. So the Young's modulus of steel is here. The density of steel is here. So we're going to assume some properties. Here are the dimensions, right? This is the upper weight. Here are the dimensions. Here's the lower weight, since that's the density. So we have displacement type 1, so from its own mass, plus the displacement that it's going to undergo from all the masses hanging off the bottom. For this piece, we have the displacement that it undergoes from its own mass, plus 
the displacement from the LED light hanging off the bottom. All of those will contribute to making this final position lower due to the gra for effect of gravity on all of the components that lie above it. Okay? We've also assumed, if I didn't mention it before, that the ceiling is perfectly rigid and it doesn't sag under, under the weight. But obviously in a real situation, you might also have to take that into consideration. Okay, so we're going to continue on and actually look at the calculation and where some of these things come from. This is just pasted in from a MathCAD example. As I says on the front slide of this, this is a solution originally done by Sally Zhang, who's a PhD student here in, uh, at Purdue University. And she uh, really developed most of this and thought out the solution for us that, that's given here. So some of the expressions that are, that are shown here are just to declare the types of equations. This, is, this one and this one, you can tell that by the bold equal sign, which just tells us a little bit of information. We have the displacement should be integral along the length for any column. Right? The displacement should be the integral along the length for any column by the specific weight, so that's the weight divided by the area times length, times the area times position, dy, divided by a, which is the cross-sectional area, times x modulus. Obviously, some things factor out here. Take that integral, and the final expression looks something like that. Okay? In reality, this gamma expression is w divided by a times l, from that, we can write an equation, a straightforward equation, that says we have a function defined by those four terms that gives that relationship. And that's what we're going to use to describe that displacement 1 from the self-loading case. Okay? If you look at the second component, right, and we look at the second component, we have an equation here, which is dependent on actually the same things, right? And it's WL over AE just a little bit different form. The sum of the displacements, the sum of displacement 1 for the upper plus displacement 2 plus displacement 1 for the lower, right? If we add those things together, we can actually get the total displacement. We're also assuming, as Sally wrote here, the density of the rod is uniform and we're not worrying about any coupling or other pieces. Calculated here is the weight of the upper section. Calculated here is the weight of the lower section. You can check it yourself. We defined the individual terms just as they're expressed in the problem, shown here, here, and here. And we can go forward to the solution. And the solution is given here with the mass of the LED being described here. We have the Young's modulus being described here. The sum is the sum of displacement type 1 plus displacement type 2, taking into account all those terms that are given above, plus displacement 1 and displacement 2, right? So essentially, the upper components, the lower components, applied to the upper, the lower components plus the LED, right? Each of those displacements is described separately here, just so you can check them, right? And the final solution on this, when we pop it out and say d sum is equal to, is given here. So these displacements added together is described right there. And thank you guys very much for paying attention. It's one example of how an axial load occurs from hanging a weight off of something as well as the object actually loading itself. Bye.